Hello, this is the 36th District Democrats. We are delighted to be interviewing Christina Poston, who is running for school board director position to District 2. Welcome and over to you, Christina, to introduce yourself. Hi there. Thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. Um, this week has definitely been a wild one and um, receiving the invites and the questions and um, this opportunity is greatly appreciated. My name is Christina Poston. I am a school principal and teacher. Um, my career has started um, as a high school teacher, science teacher, and I quickly moved into school leadership. Um, share a little bit about why I became a teacher because I think it's relevant and important to where I am now. My whole life, I thought I wanted to be a doctor, something in the medical field. I was a biochemistry major and my junior year of college, I picked up education and changed my major because I started tutoring students through the housing authority. And through that experience, I quickly realized that our youth and our communities, they really are subject to the systems that are in place around them. And it was so moving to me to be able to support students and really get to know community and that wasn't even what I was seeking, um, but it compelled me and um, it changed the course of my professional career. So I started teaching science. I was a leadership teacher, an activities coordinator, a coach, and I was not, I'm not originally from here in Seattle. I've now been here since 2010, um, but the community that I have built for myself, you know, the family that you choose, the people you surround yourself with, um, where I spend my time, all of those individuals have come from one way or another from the education system. I'm a new mother. I took this last year off to um, spend at home with my child. I'm 37. So, you know, I just decided I'm going to jump into that. But at this point, when I realized there was a position open within my community and neighborhood for school board, it clicked for me that if I'm really going to make change, this is a way to do it. Fantastic. The first question today will be asked by Laura Marie. Great. Hi, Christina. Hi there. Um, as a school board director, name some issues or situations where you feel you can make a difference and share an example from your own life where you've applied specific skills toward an outcome. We're wanting to learn more about your vision, what your strategic approach would be, and what unique strengths you would bring to the role. Great, thank you. So as I mentioned, I've been an employee through Seattle Public Schools up until this last year. I've been a teacher, I've been a coach, I've been a mentor um, and a school leader. I feel that I have a unique experience from like the outside looking in and also the inside looking out of the school system that we are discussing here today. And through those experiences, I feel motivated and prepared to be able to have some really hard conversations to make necessary changes in our district and continue celebrating and honoring what's going well, but being really honest about what needs to be changed and fixed or improved. Um, a couple of key pieces for me, which what I my vision would be is an increase in trust and transparency across the board, staff to district leadership, community to district leadership, students to district leadership, um, even the collegial practices amongst our district leaders themselves. The other is safety and across the board. I think each of those are accomplished through relationships, through civil discourse, through um, making sure that there is a checks and balances for accountability for decision-making, that we have authentic outreach for our families, our communities, our staff, those who have been through our system, those who are joining our school system to ensure that we can actually be responsive in an equitable way and not just in pockets across the city, but in every single neighborhood and community. Um, with that, a couple of, of key pieces. Um, using my experience as a school leader, I believe that I have um, demonstrated through my work, through my career, 
that I'm able to take hard situations, to take community, bring people together. And also, I know many of the people in, in the district, um, the realities in which we've all faced through the pandemic, through changes in superintendencies, and um, all of those experiences together are really what prepare me to jump right in and get started on some of the work that I've just mentioned. We'll have some follow-ups in the morning mm -hmm. in, after this. The next prepared question is from Ginny. And if you could possibly hold it to the two minute ding, that would be great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, enrollment in SPS has declined since 2020. What steps would you take to reverse this decline? Yes, yeah, so that's a hard one. I'm going to try not to repeat myself because all these questions are related. Um, I think that we need to be very honest with our community alignment. We need to determine at each school in each neighborhood how the schools themselves are working together, where the discretionary dollars are being spent. I know that one of the reasons why so many family members choose which school they will attend next or if they are going to make a change in school based on the specialized programs that are or are not available. And there isn't direct alignment from the elementary schools to the middle schools to the high schools in terms of the experience that students and families are going to receive and the way in which leadership um, is operating. I think we also need to make sure that we are viewing climate surveys, um, that we are auditing those specialized programs, and that we are also looking at some of those big picture pieces, continue to look at those, and then nail down on what are some really actionable items, including what is an authentic process that we can put in place to gain that feedback and that input from our community members who are making those choices to leave our schools. Um, it's an issue. Um, and it's one of the pieces that goes into the transparency piece as well, because as uh, partnerships are formed and collaboration between our school board, our district leaders, and all of our stakeholders are strengthened, we um, will absolutely be able to determine how to create some barriers or some boundaries, some um, rhyme reason for our families to stay or really understand where Thank you so much, Christina. The next question is from Barbara. Over to you, Barbara. Hi, Christina. Could you tell us what is your vision of a well-resourced school? Yes. And in addition, how do you practice equity and inclusion in your teaching work? Yes, I believe that a well-resourced school um, is a fully staffed school. It is um, a community of alignment between, um, as I mentioned earlier, our feeder schools. There is ongoing teaching and learning development that is happening at a district level to bring content teachers together to ensure that there is a pathway and a clear trajectory of learning for our students, secure buildings um, that are safe um, and updated as much as possible it's realistic for the resources that we have. There is um, a community level understanding of how to support the childcare and transportation need. Um, there are electives that are responsive to our students and their interests, family support workers, um, and restorative approaches to discipline or any school concern, um, and really working to strengthen that collaboration and partnership with district leaders so that every single staff member in our building feels they are valued from our district leadership as well as um, having a, a strengthened approach to really using the school-wide data um, both qualitative and quantitative Equity and inclusion is ensuring that every student is seen, is heard, is known by their name, by their story. It's making sure that we show up in service of our students and our community and we know who they are. Um, it is how we support our staff members and retain staff of color, how we um, 
really are mindful about who is serving on our PTSA and be as inclusive as possible. Thank you so much, Christina. The final prepared question before follow-ups will be asked by Shep. Over to you, Shep. What are your thoughts on addressing the budget deficit? And if necessary, how would you approach deciding which schools to close? Thank you. Going back to, I don't want to repeat myself as much, but um, there's intersectionality in all of these questions and points that you are bringing forward. I think we absolutely need outside auditing of our school spending, um, how we are using levy dollars, um, grants, um, how we are spending funds on positions and people versus programming and supports for, for our students and our families. It is ensuring that we have accurate data um, across the board um, about what's actually happening in our schools and looking at a neighborhood and feeder pattern level rather than individual schools. As I mentioned earlier, the alignment pieces that are necessary between our schools to really create a robust community of learning. Uh, and that is going to take um, intention, right? We have to be very intentional and very strategic. And I think that we also need to, from what I have learned over this past few weeks as I've been considering running for this position is that we also need to increase the trust in our state and local legislation in terms of uh, the funding that is available, how dollars are being spent, and we need to have some really honest conversations. And schools should be closed um, if absolutely necessary when we are able to meet the needs of all, all students and communities within the schools that are left to get working together. And so if we have a neighborhood that has all K through 12 that is aligned and there are options for families to stay locally within their neighborhood, and there's also a K-8 in the neighborhood, for example, or there's a small middle school, we need to make hard decisions, but based off of where the needs are met already. Thank you so much, Christina. We will now go into follow-ups from our eboard members, and you'll have one minute for each of the follow-ups. Let me see who raised their hand. And I see Laura Marie up first. Over to you, Laura Marie. Hi again, Christina. Um, I am wondering what specifically is drawing you to this role or what will be your favorite or most interest interesting part? and something that you think the public might not know about the school board director role. Yes, so I, to be as transparent as possible, I was looking this year to say, where am I going next year? I feel that being home with my child was an incredible opportunity, but there's so much that I wanna do in terms of the systems. I have been consulting with individuals all year. And I'm on this parent group and I quickly learned through someone's post that there wasn't a lot of interest in running. And it hit me that if I have an opportunity to be a part of the larger system with the additional motivation of knowing that my own child will be in the schools within the next four to five years, this is an opportunity to really be a part of the larger system and one that I couldn't pass up. Thank you so much, Christina. The next question will be asked by Barbara. Barbara? Thank you. So Christina, I'm gonna go back to um, my question about, we, you know, I asked, we asked about your vision of a well-resourced school. And um, you also said that we really, in your, another question you answered, we really need to do a, um, take an out, have an outside uh, look at how we're, so from your experience in the schools and bringing to the school board, just could you name something that you think really needs to be resourced better and, and tell us why that one thing uh, is at the top of your mind? And it, it doesn't have to be global. Just give us an example of what your experience would lead you to 
think about um, on the board? Great. One, um, school safety. Mm -hmm. I advocated for over four years um, to get a single chain link fence into the school so the school can have um, the ability to completely lock itself down in case of an emergency. Um, that was taken far too long and it is still not done. Another example is, um, so I've been a school principal in um, the north end of our district, Whitman Middle School, where I also, as a school leader, support many students of color and African-American males as named as a priority by our district. I have students who were in and out of the juvenile detention system, uh, students who um, were housing and food insecure, and we did not have access to the same amount of support or intervention or prevention that students in the South End. So an entire population of students did not have access to some of the same mentorship and programming as the Southern, as the South uh, schools. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Christina. Jeremy? Um, you, you just mentioned in your last answer, uh, school safety, and you brought up a chain link fence as a, um, as, um, a safety measure, uh, for the ability to lock down. But, um, what, um, as, as a school board member, what can you do about, um, safety when the cause of the violence is other students, like what we tragically saw at Ingram or, um, or, uh, earlier this school year? So those students who commit the crime um, were my former students. And I will tell you that I have love for them and I have seen their struggle navigating this system and the way in which we as a school district have failed them. One of the students was expelled from our buildings for having threats of violence. And there was no barriers to that student re-enrolling at the school and there were no measures taken to ensure that the safety and the threat assessment was handled appropriately. Um, we also had students who were served through specialized programming and services were discontinued by the family. There needs to be a very real and hard look at the students when the families are, are either accepting or um, no longer needing or feeling that they need specialized supports as well as students who are enrolling, uh, enrolling. Um, I feel that some of those, um, that particular incident could have been um, different in many ways. Was there a true awareness and a paying attention to school safety? Thank you so much, Christina. It looks like with our clock that this is probably our last um, question to you. And I was going to ask you about to deepen into your question around or your point around civil discourse and bringing people together. But I think the point you just brought up around school safety and, and how are we supporting or failing those who are harmed as well as those who perpetrate the harm. Um, I give it over to you to deepen whichever question, you know, whichever response you'd like to share with us at this time. Thank you. Thank you. The politics of this new adventure for me, that's what is most unfamiliar to me. The knowing school systems, the bringing people together, the building teams, I believe a couple of very cheesy things I say over and over again is you build an army wherever you go and you must always be willing to be a part of the solution. It is very easy to name what's happening and what's not working. And it's much harder to dive in and put yourself out there to be a part of the solution. And that's why I believe in hard conversations. We can have very hard conversations that are honest addressing what's happening without it having to feel personal to people in position, but really in response to our community. This is an incredible city. And I've been privileged to be a part of it. Um, I'm just really looking forward to taking that um, platform to the next level and seeing what I can do for the greater good. Christina, thank you so much for meeting with us today. This will conclude the formal part of our interview. And then Jeremy.